How's it going everybody? Thank you for checking out my video and today I want to discuss why I actually made this channel because over the years when I used to be really active with this channel as it started to kind of grow in popularity and certain videos started to gain some traction a lot of people that I were getting comments from on a regular basis were asking so what made you want to start this channel and the reason actually is and I've said it in a couple of videos prior, I haven't mentioned it as of recently because it's not been really relevant, but I started this channel because I started working at Zoomies. And for a lot of people, that's gonna probably just turn you off to this video, but please hear me out. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I just wanted to kind of give you guys with this video just an understanding of just, you know, where I come from and the idea that yes, the stigma for zoomies of the memes of oh you know you want to buy some wheels can i grip that for you i'll discuss that a little bit more but the main thing is i just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of history on me for anybody that was curious or for people that have been watching me over the years and just kind of hopefully set some things straight because there's some people that also criticize that because I haven't been able to skate for a while that I just don't skate anymore or I never really skated or whatever the case is. So I just wanted to kind of make this to hopefully just enlighten those that want to be uh, given more answers or just want clarification, but just something fun to do because I don't really get to speak about that much at all or just have not chose to until right now. But um, when I was 18, I needed a job because I had gotten a brand new car and I didn't really have the finances to be able to pay off the car. And one thing I did was I started working at a car wash and that eventually became seasonal. So I started working at Subway for a couple of years and then eventually an opportunity working at Zoomies came about. And obviously I always wanted to shop at the local shops, but unfortunately those were starting to, to go because of just the lack of customers, the lack, lack of traffic. And it was something that was a little bit devastating because I really liked the idea of having shops to go to. And I actually did help, not financially, but as far as the, the labor and helping with the catalogs, setting the store up, and just overall the feel of the shop and trying to really bring in that core local skateboarders are running it and giving influence kind of feel. I actually helped start the skate shops called Wood Pushers and it was in Riverbank, California at first and then eventually moved to Ripon, California. And unfortunately over the years, it like most skate shops that were small, it unfortunately had to shut down. So real tragic. I actually do have one of the hoodies still left. I'll try to go find it later and put it on camera for you guys to see, but it was really funny. On the front it said got wood and on the back said wood pushers. One thing that um, was really interesting to me is I got the job at Zoomies and I realized for one of the first times, because I, I mean, I'd worked in customer service working at Subway with, you know, when people are hungry and they, they want to get food, but when it comes to a customer, unlike there where they know where, what they're gonna get, or at least when they get to you, because I worked mo the whole ser service line, when they got to you, they know what they wanted, or at least what they wanted was right in front of them, and they just say, hey, you know, I want pickles, leave off the olives, I want onions, don't put this, that, this, that, whatever. They can make up their mind on the spot, but coming to a job where I had to greet people and I had to talk to people, I was very much in that way an introvert. I was not very comfortable talking to customers. And I worked the front of the store as a greeter and that was going okay, but I was still very nervous. I ended up just staring at the wall folding clothes for a while. And then eventually they're like, with the help of uh, a person that already was working there and he was a good friend of mine at the time, he was like, no, he's a skateboarder. Throw him in the skate section. He'll just slang boards all day. And so that's what they did. And I got to say, for as much as people hate Zoomies, I'm thankful I worked at Zoomies. I'm thankful for all the experiences that I have there because it really helped with me growing as a person, with me being able to do this kind of stuff that you see on camera where I'm actually, I know I'm talking to an animal object that's literally just recording my voice and my movements, but it made it to where I was 
a lot more comfortable speaking to people to where even now today I'm, you know, going to be 32 in a couple months. I am really comfortable talking with a large group of people now. I'm really just a lot better as a person. And it started with the idea of working at Zoomies because it forced me to not be as introverted or just kind of push that to the side and really just be more outgoing and more uh, friendly. Not that I wasn't friendly before, but just be to have that kind of persona that you would need to work retail. And being that I worked at a skate shop, especially when it was slow, I got to have a lot of influence over the shop aesthetic and my managers listened to me. That was one of the coolest things that I got to do at Zoomies, I mean, as far as my store is concerned. I mean, another thing that's cool is you'll see on, on the screen, I actually got to skate in the store once before, um, not just once, but a couple times. But this is one session that I don't remember what his channel is called, but this is over 10 years old or something like that. He recorded me skating one of the benches that you would sit on in the front trying on shoes. And uh, yeah, go ahead and take a look at this. This is crazy to me. I can't even ollie up that. That's how. So that's old footage. That's a lot of fun. I mean, that alling over the bench length, lengthwise was crazy to me. But um, I mean, aside from that, it was cool that they let me kind of take charge of the skate section and really design it how I wanted to do. And it also for them, it meant he gets to go clean up the skate shop area and they don't have to do it. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. But I feel I really had a good influence on not only the store, but a lot of things that the company was doing because... As some of you guys, if you've seen the Zoomies site as of the last couple of years, even up to like seven years ago, they were not promoting vulcanized shoes and cup sole shoes. And a lot of the boards in the stores, it took a long time for them to get board sizes on their, their decks. And one of the things that sucked was when I would not be working the skate section and I was working the register. I'd have people coming up to me and saying, hey, what size is that? And I'd tell them, no, grab the hook, get it down, check it out. Um, just because I'm ringing the, the customers up. And so I eventually wrote into my district manager who then wrote into the companies. And I, much like the, you know, our board technology is gone or whatever the title is, I forgot at this point with the uh, videos talking about, you know, why are board companies not from using the same board uh, technology they used to do? especially if they're so good, that product knowledge packet that I reference in that video, I sent that to my district manager and he then sent it to everybody and that ended up being a training guide for the entire company. And I, and I also made a shoe one talking about cupsole shoes, vulcanized shoes, why one is more, uh, is better in one aspect over the other, why certain prices could be fluctuated between a cupsole shoe and a vulcanized shoe, um, you know, just going over the, the general idea of what makes one shoe more ideal for one kind of customer over another and then just different fun facts about them. I wrote another packet. It was about four to five pages on just that and with diagrams and all that or pictures and all that. And I sent that to my district manager and that ended up being a training guide. And I know that because if any of you guys follow on Instagram, Zoomies has an event. It's called 100K. And I've been there, I think, about four times now, something like that. It's either three or four. I skipped a couple years just because somebody that was new wanted to go and they ended up actually asking me, would you mind if somebody else goes in your place because you've already been? And I said, yeah, please go for it. That's cool. Take it. That's, that's awesome. As long as I can have my time off um, here at the store, I don't care. Um, so I, I'd take three days off just like they did, um, but I just wouldn't go. Uh, but that just let me go skate, which is great. Um, but you know, I got to have a lot of influence and I'm not saying that I'm the reason that they started putting cupsole and vulcanized shoes, but I know that's what they trained with, um, for a lot of the new hires and the store managers. And it's because when I would go to these events, I would meet a lot of people from corporate and eventually I was pulled aside by someone, um, from higher up and just was like, Hey, so you're 
you were DG0552, right? You're the guy that wrote these packets and you're from store 052 uh, and blah, 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 giving me all kinds of like, you know, cert, like pretty much clarification, like he knows who I am. And he's like, you know, I want to thank you for writing that. You know, we've been, it's been something that it's our, our biggest seller, which shoes is, is a huge seller for the company. It's one of the top things that they sell, but like, yeah, we've been trying to learn or figure out how to sell these shoes better and ways to be able to train people on what, shoes are and not just like hey that's a nike sign you know someone wants nikes but like why would somebody else want this kind of nike over this kind of nike or why would they want this model look or over that one or if there's a skateboarder they would want a certain type of shoe over another and you know you really helped with putting that into perspective for us so we can train people and so i wanted to just say thank you for that because it really does help with the sales it really does help with also building credibility and um, like I mentioned earlier, I'll bring this back up, is because Zoomies has a stigma of when it comes to the people that work there, there's a lot of people, and I, I can vouch for this, there's a lot of people that don't know what they're selling, but they're told to go sell it. And that is not just something that Zoomies is doing, but I know that they do it. And I'm not here to defend Zoomies. I'm not here to bash Zoomies. I'm just saying it's, it's something that happens when um, and I, this is something that every company does, even for example, Amazon, you start off small and you can start hiring people specifically for certain things. Like for example, we could hire people for the skate section and just keep them in the skate section certain days of the week. And that's fine. But as the business grows and as sales go up and as you know, inventory starts to grow. You want to have a bigger building. You want to have a bigger location. You want to have more people. And eventually, if the company gets to be such a big, you know, a, a huge company overall, they need bodies. It's not even about the quality of the body anymore. It's about the quantity. And I can vouch for that because when I was a store manager, because I went all the way from seasonal sales to store manager, and I eventually had to start hiring people for Black Friday and then Christmas. And I overhired on purpose because I knew that Black Friday to halfway through the first week of Christmas sales, I would lose half these kids because it was Black Friday scared the hell out of them or they just couldn't cut it. You know, it was long hours, well, whatever the case is. I had overhired on purpose and I told my district manager this and I told them my strategy and eventually it was proven right, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I overhired because I just needed bodies. I needed people that could be there. I was going to be there for, you know, almost, you know, 20 hours, whether it was on the clock or not. Um, but again, that's another story. Um, my last six months working there as a store manager is totally a different story. But um, the idea is when you get to be a big company, you always should focus on the quality. That's a guarantee. That's something that I truly believe in. And it's something that a lot of companies unfortunately lose in. But when you're growing and you need sales to reflect the growth of what your company is doing, eventually when it comes to people that are applying, you're not always going to get perfect tens. That just comes with any job. You can even look at people from McDonald's, not to say that they're not you know great workers, but you're going to get everybody applying, especially if it's the cool place, if it's where everyone wants to go hang out or people like to just try on hats and go stare at the mirror and take selfies and upload it to Instagram just for likes and never buy anything. I don't know what the hell I knew when that happened. But anyway, it's a place that people gravitated towards and you're going to get everybody working there. And because of the idea that it's not a job that you need a degree in, it's not something that you need a lot of qualifications in, knowing how to work a register is going to help. Knowing skateboarding is going to help. Knowing how to sell to everybody is going to help, but you don't need those qualifications. You can be taught those, but you don't necessarily need them right off the bat. And I know a lot of it gets lost in translation when it's you see someone in the back uh, working skate that has no idea what you know skateboarding is maybe they've never even seen a skateboard in their life and they're just trying to sell or they're it's like hey this person can bring in a crowd because of their influence whatever it may be i'll let you decide what that is but whatever that may be and they can always upsell because they can just say that would look cool if you had it 
and it will make sales. And that's one of the things that I did not like. And I always told people about, I was like, hey, don't put them back there just because they are A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. If they can't sell skateboards, especially if I'm working there, if they can't build it, they can't sell it because I'm not gonna go back there and build it so that way they can go else, elsewhere and get sales because that's how Zoomies was. It was not something of, they had, you know, it was commission sales. It's That's how it is. And, you know, it was, there's a whole way to sell. It was, you know, greet the customer, uh, initiate conversation, identify needs and wants, show pertinent product knowledge, uh, suggest alternatives and advice, suggest additional merchandise, and close the sale. How the hell do I still remember that over like six years? Anyway, um, the one thing is I tried to bring that local feel to Zoomies, and that's what helped me to be able to talk to people better, to be able to sell to people better, and just to be able to have a good rapport with my customers. And I even had customers that came all the way from Sacramento, from uh, San Francisco, and it's not because they came there specifically, like, hey, you know, Daniel's working, this, you know, working today, let's go visit him. It's like, hey, when they came out to Modesto and they wanted to skate, let's go to Zoomies because we know this dude is working today and we need spots and we need some stuff and he knows what we're looking at to where eventually when I transferred to another store where I actually got promoted up into management, I had customers that were always skating the local parks or out filming or whatever. And all they said was, hey, what do you got in? Because I already had talked to them enough to where it's like I knew what their shoe styling was, I knew what boards they liked, I knew what shape they liked, I knew what size they liked, I knew pretty much what their whole setup was, and all they would say is, hey, what do you got that you think I'd like? And it's like, all right, cool, come back, I'll show you, and then, you know, give them all kinds of options, and then let them decide from there, and if they want to get something great, and if not, um, you know, they can come back when they have the money to do so, or just have the time, and that was something that, I mean, with this whole video being long, the one thing I just wanted to shine on was, it was awesome that I got to be a part of Zoomies when I did because it helped develop my ability to talk to people and to just be more open with everybody else about myself because it's something that I've for a while not really had a lot of experience in is really talking about myself. I was really much growing up being a good listener, uh, but skateboarding was my outlet to kind of just be who I was. It was to a form of expression. And that was something that I really took pride in is just being able to just more so feel free on my board. And Zoomies helped to kind of express that in ways where I was still involved with skateboarding. But I was able to just now talk to people normally using, you know, social skills. And especially be able to have really, really good customer uh, clientele that would recognize, you know, how when they come in, it's like, oh, Daniel's here. And they go right to me and they, they talk and eventually they chop around or whatever. But it was great to just have regulars that knew who I was. They were ha always happy to come in. We had great conversations. I always got in trouble for that because <laughs> I would always talk to them way longer than expected. But it was really cool because it helped open me up to be who I am now or help become who I am now. And that's why I started this channel is because a lot of people were coming in and asking me things. They were just saying, you know, hey, you know, what shoe, why are you wearing those shoes? What makes those shoes so good? Because they knew I skated and it was skateboarders coming in a lot of time asking, what, well, you know, why do you wear those shoes? Those shoes are, you know, ridiculous or they're really expensive or they are this or that. Like, why do you wear those shoes? And you know, or why do you ride this board? You know, tell me about boards. What's good about this? What, why should I ride a light truck versus a heavy truck? You know, what does height make a difference in the trucks versus, you know, wheel size or whatever? And so answering those questions on a regular basis, I decided I wanted to make a channel about it because I wanted to be able to give people the answers to so many questions that I was getting on a regular basis. That's like, hey, if you guys need any more help, um, you know, you're always welcome to come into the back of the store where I'm working. Or if you go to my YouTube channel, I have tons of videos where I already answer a lot of those questions and you can learn from home. So that way, next time you come in, it hopefully will be a little bit of an easier experience for you because you already are more knowledgeable about what you want. And it really played well for the very beginning of the growth of the channel is because people were really paying attention to it. They were learning about brands, they're learning about sizing and different things uh, about skateboarding. And it really helped them 
to gauge their setup from their feet to their board to their trucks and all that. And it just, it made a good difference for a very long time. And so, you know, even though people will knock zoomies for everything that it is, and some things are justifiable and some things you just need to think a little bit more critically and understand it's not just a zoomies thing, but they do partake in it. And that's something that I just wanted to make a video about, just something fun, just to let you guys know a little bit more about me. And hopefully you guys were able to get something from it and just be able to learn a little bit more about me. Because I started this channel when I was in my early 20s. I'm 32 now. And I mean, looking back, I would never imagine right now I would be where I am in, you know, the life that I have, especially, you know, upstairs. I got my son upstairs sleeping. And I would never imagine when I was in my early 20s or even just, you know, 20 and just thinking like, man, I would be exactly where I am right now, but I couldn't be happier about it. And again, a lot of that social skills that I was able to get is because I was able to help develop them at Zoomies. And I can always make more videos about stuff like this. Like there's, there's videos that I can make about my experiences at 100K because some people really follow those because they do get really crazy. I mean, I've had tons of amazing experiences there from, you know, the only time I've really ever been contact high because of Snoop Dogg, um, helping pro skaters find their teams because they were drunk at the Denver airport, which is pretty much a city in itself, um, skating with, you know, Mac Miller and Juicy J in the background. And I mean, I'll try to find that video and put it in here somewhere, but you know, uh, and also, you know, Lizard King showing me up on a trick at my very last uh, Zoomies 100K, which is really, really cool. And uh, even just that session itself where it was, I mean, I could go on forever. There's so many amazing things that I was able to do, like uh, getting phone numbers for certain someone, I will not mention who it is, but there was somebody that wanted me to go get, pick up these two girls numbers <laughs> and I did and it was crazy because I was on the clock I had to leave the autograph line to go do it and then the night before too which is even worse I jumped out of a four-story balcony into a pool uh completely drunk it's not my proudest moment but it happened you know there's all kinds of stories I can do um even my exit review I got before I quit zoomies was absolutely the worst review I have ever gotten to this day I still have it and it was the greatest review I ever got because it, it was it was really a wake-up call I really needed to kind of grow up but you know I could do stories about that kind of stuff if you guys were ever interested and just let me know in the comment section down below I know this is a long video but I hope you guys got to learn a little bit more about me I have social medias obviously you know Instagram Snapchat and all that where you can learn a little bit more but I just wanted to put something in video form as to why I started this channel and it is because of working at Zoomies that helped me to want to develop this. But that's going to be it, as long as it is. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video. If you want to see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes up. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Just lets me know to make more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.